This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Live from Harlem in New York City, it's the Ramble with me, I'm Alex Bennett. Wait a minute, you'll see me in just a moment. Here I am. Hi, how are you? Good to see you. It's uh, it's Wednesday and uh, this is our Ramble. We do this for three nights running and then we get a whole bunch of time off again. That's kind of like I like it lately, kind of, you know. But anyway, uh, mm, mm. you know, it's time, actually. I, I should probably uh, admit a, 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 a dear friend of ours uh, here who, uh, let me just also put his name up here, too, so that he's, there we go, folks. All right, let's go to the Zoom panel. There he is. Wave, Phil. Hey, there you are. Yeah, well, it's been an interesting week. What are you? What have you been doing? It's been an interesting week. Yeah. What What week have you been living in? Well, we got. Uh, um, we're uh, thinking about Russia and uh, Ukraine mm -hmm. uh, having conflict, mm -hmm. uh, possibly involving NATO forces. You know, possibly just screwing up uh, the flow of oil to uh, the uh, EU countries. Not going to happen. Uh, and, you know, the price of oil will go up here. Not going to happen. Uh, I, so the soothsayer says. Yeah, not uh, going to happen. All right. No. So, but it's just a cover-up for Durham uncovering. Oh, gee, we'll get into that in a second. Uh, Durham no. didn't uncover anything, okay? No. No. Trump thinks Durham uncovered something, but Durham didn't uncover anything. But let, we'll get to that in a second, because right. I have all the info for you. Oh, I'm ready for the info. Yeah. Well, you see, you're not going to believe it anyway, so why well, should know, I even waste my time? I, I, I was doing a measure tonight uh, right after mm -hmm. I closed the Hold store. Hold on a second. I have to go over and get some papers here. Go ahead. Keep going. So I, I was doing a measure right after I uh, closed the store for the day, and uh, the old 80-some-odd-year-old lady was listening to MSNBC, and I heard the, the these, it was like barking dogs, you know? Oh, Trump this, Trump that. Haven't these guys got the memo that, uh, you know, uh, this Trump collusion stuff is, is not what they say it is? And you know they're. Um, uh, it, it's amazing how how it sounded like like a bunch of barking dogs. I don't remember. It's the one with Joy Behar. Joy Behar she, doesn't have a show on MSNBC. Well, uh, she was. I think that she was a panelist. Uh, she certainly doesn't have a show on MSNBC. She could have been a guest on one of those. Or shows. Maybe she was a guest, but oh god, it it, it sounded like barking dogs. You know, and and they got louder and louder because they couldn't make their point. Uh, you know, I almost I felt like telling this. Which customer, means, by the way, folks, they made their point, but Phil didn't like it. So. Well, I, I I was I, in the back of my mind, I was saying to myself, maybe I should tell this gal. Mm -hmm. I don't want to work for her because I don't like her political viewpoint. <laughs> but uh, only only Democrats do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, first of all, let me let me start off. Uh, this evening, I have to mention something. Yeah. Um, an old friend of mine died yesterday. Oh, who? Um, oh P.J. O'Rourke. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I've heard of him. Uh, P.J. O'Rourke died. Uh, P.J. was a... I, I always liked P.J. P.J. was... I go back with him all the way to the times when he was at the uh, National Lampoon. Yeah, he, he was a columnist. He was the editor. Yeah. At, oh, of okay. the National Lampoon. He was writer at one point, and then he became an, the editor of the National Lampoon. 
at which point he asked me to start writing for the National Lampoon, and I just didn't consider myself a writer, so I thanked him and turned it down. Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, he and I have been friends for years, and I always like to tell the story about the time that PJ and I were at my apartment down on 14th Street. Uh, I, I even remember we were sitting on the floor. I was lying against a beanbag chair. Remember those things? Oh, absolutely. Well, they were so fashionable. <laughs> And so, so made an apartment just look comfy. Huh. Oh, boy. Anyway, so I'm leaning you against... You had a college, college style furniture in that. You had, uh, like, wooden planks with bricks or uh, cinder blocks that held uh, some video equipment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, that was, a, you know, I was living the life of a hippie, okay, or yeah. a beatnik or, no, hippie. I was well, a beatnik. I became a hippie. Kid, every college kid has those kinds of shelves. Yeah. Well, it was very cheap to live in those days. Okay. You just bought a couple of planks and everybody went, nice furniture. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, and we were lying on the floor, sitting on the floor and passing a joint back and forth mm -hmm. when it was highly illegal. Okay. Yeah. And uh, at one point, uh, PJ says to me, one of these days, while we're still alive, this is going to become legal. And he called it. Yeah. You know, he called it. Um, I thought he was going to lose, but he called it. Uh, it. Suddenly, all of a sudden, everything started happening. The whole country is practically now legal. Is it legal in New York now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they just haven't figured out the method and the taxation for selling it. That's all. So. Yeah. That's the uh, problem. But it's been, it, it was passed, you know, that they're going to have they stores and everything. On them. They yeah. don't make it easy on those merchants that are selling uh, cannabis. Uh, they can't deposit their well, money. Well, no, that, that, that is not the local states. That's the federal government who yeah. says, well, it's not legal according to the federal government, and therefore uh, you can't, uh, banks can't take it, which are federally controlled, cannot take your money. Uh, yeah. And so what they did is they had all kinds of problems when they first did it in um, uh, Colorado. Where was it? Was the first place? Yeah, Colorado, I think, was first. Was it Colorado? Yeah, I think it was. Was it? Yeah, I guess it was Colorado. I never thought Colorado was that advanced. Anyway, in, they did it in Colorado, and uh, these people had no place to put their money. So they bought these big giant safes and kept putting their money in it and having to hire people to guard the safes every night. That's and, what Saddam Hussein did. And then they got another big safe and they put more money in that. Finally, they found a way around it all and it turned out it was credit unions. So they deposited their money in credit unions and then they could write checks on their credit union money and things like that so you would think that if the government wants tax money from yeah. that they'd let them deposit it but um well they found a way around it but anyway uh that was my that, i remember that with pj and and pj was oh, a good sorry. guy and then he uh came on my show a couple of times when i was over at uh Sirius XM, and uh, we I reminded him of that story, and he remembered it, and, you know, we had a good time musing about how it was suddenly becoming legal everywhere, you yeah. know, but I really I guess, liked PJ, and I was so so surprised, really, to hear of his death. He died of lung cancer. Um, was he a smoker? Or? I guess. I mean, how do you die of lung cancer if you aren't a smoker, uh, unless you maybe live in Pittsburgh? Yeah, you know. there's, uh, there's uh, environmental reasons why people uh, end up, you know, with lung cancer. Well, there are some people who get lung cancer without smoking, but I would say he probably smoked. Yeah, you know, I, I, I would, I would be willing to figure that to be so. But anyway, so anyway, we lost PJ, and this is getting to me. You know, these people I know are dying. You yeah, know? and I guess uh, the the reason so many of them are dying is because I'm still alive. Yeah, that you know, I uh, my ex wife's father was uh, in his eighties, and he he passed away. He had cancer, but uh, he he said one of the things that bothered him mm -hmm. was that even living into his eighties, that his all his friends were dying, uh, or dead. And, yeah, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, lonely. Well, what I figure is is that uh, when I die, the world will come to an end. 
For you, it will. Well, <laughs> it will come to an end. The, oh. the only thing that makes this world uh, what it is, to me at least, is my being alive. Well, you, know? you know, everybody sort of thinks about that stuff, and including me. And, you know, I, I've had friends that have passed away. I, I, there are other people that I've known that have passed away. Mm -hmm. But the world continues to operate. Uh, regardless, just as if you were never there, and uh, the sun still comes up, mm -hmm. uh, people still are going to work and doing the things they have to do, and you would think, you know, what, what happens to your mem to the memory of of that person? Well, I would I would love to be alive. I would love to have not grown up at this time, but be alive two hundred years in the future and see what it's like. You know, yeah. If if even we're here. You know, at the rate we're going, we're doing so much crap that, you know, Well, you know, every generation has said that about the past generation. Well, you know, uh, I got to tell you, uh, things are not very good right now in the world. Yeah. And uh, there is such fighting in, in between people. I mean, we, we had fighting and we disagreed about stuff. But when I was growing up, yeah, we had the McCarthy stuff going on, which sure. was just disgusting. Uh, but... What's going on now, it, it, nothing surpasses it in my entire lifetime. The enmity that people hold for each other and for each other's politics. And yeah. it's really terrible. It's really terrible. It is. People are, are not, uh, they, they don't look at the good in people anymore. Well, it's also, e also, you know, you can disagree with somebody, but be civil about it. You know, yeah. hey, I disagree with you. Okay, you have the right to disagree with me. Uh, but don't suddenly be nasty and mean and vile and you know, and and start tearing down our uh, our our capital. You know that 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 whole thing is really depressed me because nowhere at any time in my lifetime has there been anything coming anywhere nearly close to an insurrection. Now uh, you uh, you weren't there when the Canadians burned down the White House. No, I wasn't there here. When Right. Uh, yeah, you know. And by the way, fuck the Canadians. Okay, <laughs> let's just say fuck you know, the Canadians. They try uh, to burn down our White House. Now, yeah. what's happening in Canada is is very um, uh, it, very Canadian. It, it, no, it's not. It's no, not it's very not Canadian. Canadian at all. Yeah. Uh, you know, you would think that these people have you know rights, and if they wanted to protest, they can protest. And in the United States, we've done things like that. Mm -hmm. In France. You know, when the when the truckers protest or the farmers protest, they they just go out to the highway and they dump potatoes all over it and uh, they park their trucks and nobody goes to work and mm -hmm. till whatever dispute it is is settled. Yeah. But in Canada this time, they have held uh, a gun to these protesters heads. What they did was they said, if you don't get off the bridge. Not only are we going to tow your truck, we're going to cancel your insurance. We're going to cancel your uh, licenses. And true and, to Canadians, they all buckled. Yeah, well, <laughs> they all buckled. Yeah. They said they were sorry. They were sorry. <laughs> yeah, right. That's what I was going to say. They're so sorry. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, yeah. trucker Steve, if you're listening to us. We don't mean to make fun of Canadians, but. I don't yeah. think he was happy about the way the government were was treating the truckers. Yeah. If uh, if I got the right take on it, yeah, he seemed pretty uh, upset by it or angry, and uh, you know, it's just it's the difference. I mean, you couldn't do that in America. Uh, that's one thing that we have that we could be proud of is if somebody if workers want to stand up and protest, they can do it. Now, of course, it was about well, here, yeah, but but here, here they were blocking a bridge. They were blocking commerce. Uh, well, you know, it's okay. That, it's okay to you know put your trucks in a line somewhere in downtown. Where is it? Tor Toronto? No, it was and, Ontario. Ontario. But, and and you know, wait a minute, and and blow your whistles and protest and hold up signs and things like that. But going to arrest them for blowing their horns. What you were doing is you were blocking an international. Access. Yes. Now, the Port of Oakland, uh, during the, um, uh, not Me Too, uh, during the Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. uh, uh, deals, 
the protesters uh, went out to the street. They blocked Highway 880. They blocked the Port of Oakland. Trucks couldn't get in and out. They couldn't uh, deliver or uh, or pick up uh, the containers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, there was n- nothing that they could really that the government could really do about mm-hmm. it. Uh, whereas uh, in Canada, they really, you know, got down on these guys and uh, and and cracked the whip. I, I don't know. I, I don't know how I would have handled that situation, but all I know is that it was causing it was causing irreparable harm to a lot of people who had yeah. had commerce That's- to engage in and so on and so forth. Uh, and uh, uh, I I don't know that Trudeau maybe handled it the best way possible, but then again. He got it taken care of. Well, do you, you know. remember how many times they've shut down the Bay Bridge because of protests? You know, I mean, just shut it down. And, and well, I remember I once Woody Harrelson was hanging from a tower on the Golden Gate Bridge. Really? Yeah. Well, I, uh, I gave him the finger as I drove by because I wanted to get across the goddamn bridge. Even though I agreed with what he was protesting, Here was, here's my theory. Mm-hmm. If you're going to protest, it's fine. This was something we always realized way back when. But don't do something that is going to impinge upon the average citizen. Because if you want them on your side, that's one way you're not going to get them on your side. You're just going to make them mad at you. And, and they're going to say, oh, that goddamn protester. But if you do it in a way that doesn't impinge on their progress or going somewhere... And uh, and it, but it still makes your statement. Then that's a good way of doing it. What did you, know? you think of Eugene Debs when he was uh, shutting down the uh, port of San Francisco? Eugene Debs, wasn't it Eugene Debs? Who who was the union guy? Uh, uh, Eugene Debs goes all the way back. I can't remember what Eugene V. Debs 1928 did. Twenty eight or something like that. Are you talking uh, about he, Harry Bridges? That's it, Harry Bridges. <laughs> no, it's a little difference. All right, that, Eugene, Eugene Debs, Debs, Harry Bridges. Everybody, have a drink. Have a drink. Phil hey, Jim. Yeah, you know, on that one, I'll uh, I'll, I'll join in. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Um, you would be Gene parched Gene, if it wasn't for me. Eugene V. Debs. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Uh, there's, a radio, there's a radio station named after Eugene V. Debs here in San, really? in New York, or, or did. I don't know if the call letters still exist, but there was W-E-V-D. Really? Which uh, was... What uh, did Eugene Debs do? He, I can't remember now. I, I, he had something to do with unions or something like All that. All right. Well, uh, well I, I don't know why I thought Debs and not Bridges, but it was Harry Bridges. <laughs> that uh, shut down the port and there was uh, shootings and uh, somebody, a couple of guys got killed uh, and uh, there, well, were, there were riots. Well, hold now, on a second. Let me just, Eugene V. Debs. Yeah. Eugene. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, Eugene V. Debs. Member of the, well, Eugene V. Debs. Yeah. Uh, he was a uh, he, 1855 was a American socialist, political activist, and trade unionist, and one of the founding members of uh, something. I don't know. I didn't see. What's he known for? He's noted for oratorical skills, and his speech denouncing American participation in World War I led to a second arrest in 1918. He was convicted under the Sedition Act of 1918 and sentenced to a 10-year term. President Warren G. Harding commuted his sentence in December of 1921. That was Eugene Debs. Okay. Oh, I'm surprised Harding lived that long. Well, Didn't he? He died in office uh, so. uh, only a few months into his... Uh, was he the guy? Yeah, was he the guy who went to uh, Alaska and came back and, and, yeah, and died? Poisoning. And he died in the Palace Hotel in San Francisco. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's yeah. who it was. Yeah, just before he pardoned Debs. Yeah. But uh, yeah. okay, so Harry Bridges. Okay. Back, back to back to these things. Back to Harry Bridges. Yeah, you you being a supporter of unions, mm-hmm. workers, and mm-hmm. things like that. Mm-hmm. I, I'm surprised that you're taking this tact. Uh, on these guys up in Canada. I, you know, it's just, I don't understand. Well, no, uh, I, I, my tact on the, on the guys in Canada is, yes, do it, but don't, don't make it difficult for the common man 
to go about his normal daily life. Because if you want them on your side, give them a reason to be on your side. Yes, you know? but if, 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 it's, if it's not made difficult for the common man, the common man ignores their plight. So Okay, uh, well, first of all, first of all, yeah. let's just stop for a moment. And let's put this in a slightly different context than a lot of other protests, okay? What right. is this a protest over? Uh, it's a protest over government mandates. No, now, no, 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 wait a minute. What particular government mandate? Well, uh, interestingly enough, <laughs> when they interviewed these truckers, the truckers said that they have no problem with the vaccine. Their problem is with, with the, the government yeah. telling them to get the vaccine. That, there is, and, and what about the the good of, of everyone and the fact that we really would like to wipe out this horrible scourge that has hit us and get back to our lives as normal. And the best way we can do that is if everybody chips in by getting a little needle in their arm and a mask on their face and doing what it takes. Well, they, and, and that's uh, hardly, believe me, that's hardly a freedom movement. Okay. They, they ended mask mandates in Contra Costa County today. Yeah, but that, not because of what's going on in Canada. Okay. No, but, uh, well, maybe. Uh, I, I actually walked into my bank today, no mask. You know, they, they were afraid I was there to rob it. I would because... still, I personally, I'd still wear a mask. Well, a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. I was in Whole Foods picking up some lunch uh, stuff, and uh, they all had masks. Uh, so I, I didn't see a sign on the door. So I said to the cashier, I said, what's the deal on masks? She said, well, if you're vaccinated, you don't have to wear one. It's your choice. Mm -hmm. So I said, yeah, I'm vaccinated. Well, I w I'm, I'd still wear a mask. I'm not taking any chances. Yeah. Okay, so you wanted to talk about this uh, thing with this this mythical idea that that Hillary Clinton mythical, had something. Sure. Yes, it is. It is. Yeah. Well, I, you're listening to the to the uh, left wing media. No. Uh, this is from Vanity Fair. You've uh -huh. probably heard on Saturday the former president, whose name shall be, not be said here. Uh, said that uh, a special counsel Robert Durham. What was John wrong? Durham, I think. I, yeah, but he called him Robert Durham. Oh. He meant yeah. to say John Durham, but was apparently too angry to keep his Johns and Roberts straight, had uncovered indisputable evidence that my campaign and presidency were spied upon by operatives paid by the Hillary Clinton campaign in an effort to develop a completely fabricated connection to Russia a scandal far greater in scope and magnitude than Watergate, for which Trump suggested that those involved should be executed, but would, he would settle for criminal prosecution. The problem, neither Robert Durham nor John Durham, if you want to say there is a John Durham, uh, or is there a John Durham and not a, uh, yes, a, a John no, Robert. Durham, is, is those, and, or anyone else for that matter, had actually provided evidence of any such crime, let alone even suggested it. Now, let me continue here. Uh, strangely, there wasn't a lot of fact-checking going on down at Mar-a-Lago, but for the actual reason the lamestream media hadn't covered the story was likely because the time notes Sussman's conversation with the CIA had already been reported last October. Durham never said anything about the White House infiltrate. The special counsel also never claimed the Clinton campaign had paid Jaffe's company. And perhaps most importantly, the filing never said the White House data that came under scrutiny was from the Trump era. In fact, lawyers for the data scientists who helped develop the data analysis in question say this was happening during, hold on, Barack Obama's presidency. Did not happen during Robert, Trump's presidency. Robert Obama. Yeah, during, it did not happen during Trump's presidency. What Trump and some news outlets were saying is wrong, attorneys John Westby and Mark Rash told the Times, the cybersecurity researchers were investigating 
malware in the White House, not spying on the Trump campaign. And to our knowledge, all of the data they used was non-private DNS data before Trump took office. Thank you. So I guess we'll see if there's uh, some indictments for There won't be any indictments, Phil, because it uh, never Durham, happened. Durham has been playing this thing very quiet and, and close to the breast. He hasn't. He didn't uh, say, but he didn't say that it was ha it, this had happened during the Trump era. Well, uh, according to the article, no, according that, to Trump. No, 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 no. No, uh, Trump uh, is the one who's floating the idea. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, regarding Jaffe, Durham's latest filing uh, nominally portrays. Uh, pertains to a potential conflict of interest for Sussman's current counsel, uh, Latham and Watkins. Now, I guess, uh, is it Sussman or uh, Sullivan that is currently in uh, the... Uh, I don't know. After a Biden while, this whole thing gets so con confusing that I, I, I can't tell you. But all I'm telling you is, is that none of this... Uh, did, no, nowhere did anybody say that Hillary Clinton was spying on Trump. Uh, well, Durham has implied that the no. efforts of Sussman no, and it, Jaffe's team uh, began sometime in April of 2016. Mm -hmm. The initial incident of Sussman mm -hmm. specifically notes that data had already been uh, mm -hmm. aggregated from on or about May 4th, 2016. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're letting another communist on the uh, on the panel. What is this? <laughs> so the, the mask mandate. Well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. We're not talking about the mask mandate oh, right sorry. now. Oh, sorry. You were. All right. So it seems as though uh, that, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. And uh, no, 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 no. Where there's Trump blowing off his 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 his, his brains on the, on the Internet or wherever he posted this crap. Uh, well, it, it's just, just him, it's just him trying to create a, a diversion. Durham is not saying that this went on during the Trump administration. He's saying it went on, and it went on during the uh, uh, the uh, Obama administration. And what it was was looking for malware. Uh, I guess uh, originally in 2014 that was the case. But as time progressed, not only did he report to the CIA, but what he reported to the CIA, he also reported to the Clinton uh, campaign. So, anyway, uh, did you, let's you let's go. Even, you to, didn't even hear what I read to you. Yes, I did. It, it was it was uh, mumbo jumbo trying to uh, make. It says uh, the problem neither Robert Durham, or nor John Dur Durham or anyone else for that matter, had actually provided evidence of any such crime, let alone suggested it. That's what they're saying. Well, we'll see. Uh, you know, uh, Durham's a pretty straight shooter. Oh, is he? Yeah. Who is he? Uh, he's the um, uh, uh, special uh, investigator. For who? Uh, for, uh, <laughs> you know, for uh, the government uh, to look into... Uh, tr uh, Trump, Russia, and all the things that uh, took place uh, during the uh, during Trump's campaign and afterwards, because he was accused of uh, colluding with the Russians. And uh, according to uh, what he found out, that these sources tried to put Russia and Trump together, trying to create that narrative. And it, uh, so far, they haven't mm -hmm. found who anything. hired Durham. Trump. I rest my case. Well, Trump said investigate. I think Durham has a pretty good reputation. Oh, he does? Yeah. He does? Oh, okay. Anybody know of Durham's reputation here? Oh. You know, obviously, he doesn't have a reputation at all. Oh, they no, none of these people want to know the reputation. No, you think he's got a great reputation Biden's because true. you want to believe his crap. Yeah. You know. Well. Mm. Anyway. Oh. Uh, we're back Alan, with the Alan, Russian uh, thing on mute, I think. What? Alan was talking, but he's on oh. mute. Oh no, he doesn't have to stay on mute. Why are uh, you I, on mute? No, I, was, <laughs> I was. I was nice. I was on the phone just for a minute here. Oh, I see. So, okay. so um, calls you. 
the, the, the mask thing. Yeah, you never leave the house. Bill, Alex <laughs> is right. Why don't you wear a mask? Why don't you wear a mask? Because Tony? I am done. I am done being oppressed by the man. Right. So the, the mask mandate goes against the CDC, the FDA, and medical right now. It says it's too early. We didn't learn from the last three. Yeah. So it's a political move, not a medical move. So well, we'll see. see because you, those there, I think those... I think the reason everybody is rushing to do away with the masks and everything now is because there are midterm elections coming up. Absolutely. And everybody wants to get this behind us. Yep. You know, uh, they're giving people a little taste of freedom and then they're going to raise the price of gas again and they're going to make you wear masks and they're going to make you get a fifth shot. And uh, you know. they, they won't make you. You don't have to get a fourth or fifth one. You probably already got your fourth one, didn't you? No, I got the third. I want a fourth. I want a fourth. <laughs> yeah. But I got my government handout yesterday. Oh, you got, I didn't get my yeah, Mine came in the mail today. Yeah. Yep. Really? We've yet to get ours. I didn't get mine either. I had to pay for mine. I'm down How do to you one. like that? You yeah. didn't pay for Four them. of them. Don't worry. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, if we been, we, we've been these. joined by one of the brightest people on that comes on this panel. I mean, besides Kevin, of course. Uh, and Tony, his, uh, his, his intelligence goes without question. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, Vernon, did you hear something here you might want to talk about? Oh, you heard something, Tony? It took me a while to, to get logged in. I don't know why, but uh, I just wanted to make a comment about those those communistic Democrats in, in the state of Kentucky. Our governor has proposed rolling back property tax with cars particularly increasing in value. He's rolling back the property tax mm -hmm. on autos in our state so that you do not pay more than you did last year even though the value of the car may go up in the Kelly Blue Book or whatever, you're only going to pay property tax on what you paid last year. And he's rolling back the sales tax in the state for one year from 6% to 5% because of inflation. Are, 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 are they talking about nationally uh, rolling back the gas tax also? Uh, Biden, I, haven't, I uh, haven't heard I haven't heard that. What are what our of Republican legislatures in the state of Kentucky down in Frankfurt. What they have been spending all of their time on is telling school boards that they cannot impose mask mandates. Yeah. You mean the, the kids who have the least uh, 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 contagion, contagion rate and have the least side effects from getting COVID? Yeah. Uh, by yeah, the, over, well, by, by it, the it, way, it, you're, find, you're wrong about strange. that. I yeah, find it over, strange. Over 1,500 kids died during COVID that I find were not strange. vaccinated in this country. And, I find and, it and that, almost a million Americans. I find it strange that yeah, Republicans, so Republicans who, who said, okay, we don't, want to, we don't want to impose a statewide ban. We want to leave it up to the local districts are now saying, I'm going to pass a law so that you local districts can't do it. Uh, in Virginia, I'm not familiar with Kentucky, but I heard that in Virginia, they were uh, they said that it, it could be an individual's choice, but the school couldn't make uh, the students wear a mask. Uh, is that maybe what's about, happening in Kentucky? I don't know what I don't know what about what about the well, Virginia, you, you, but that's you, what they're trying to do in Kentucky. They're trying to say they want to leave it up to the parents. Yeah, you, yeah, that's you what had you had you had yeah. something. You had something going on in San Francisco about mask mandates. They lifted them. Well, they did. in schools, they lifted them. They also got got rid of the, uh, what is it? They got rid of the uh, some of the superintendents of the school system? No, uh, the school board. School board. School board. Three recall. of the most uh, woke members of the school board <laughs> were recalled because they were spending their time changing the names of schools yeah, rather yeah. than uh, working on the uh, the issues at hand. And they were changing the names of the schools because they felt that, well, because they felt that they were not uh, proper, that they were, uh, for instance, what, didn't they want to change the name of Lincoln High School? Yes. Lincoln? Why? He was I, a great I, person. I, he got killed too. I mean, geez. 
you know why? And, uh, uh, up in uh, San Anselmo, they, 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 they changed the name of the high school there to the Alex Bennett High School. Okay, <laughs> no longer Sir Francis Drake. I, oh, no. I think it, it did change from Sir Francis Drake. Did it really? I think so. Why are they changing the names? It's cool. uh, let me look it up. Yeah, why don't you spend, look it up? Uh, for some reason, I thought that they did. Mm -hmm. Go on, They're Drake. trying to. I don't know if they did or not. Oh. Yeah, Jeez. they were trying to do uh, the boulevard as well. Yeah, I mean, at, the boulevard. boulevard is the long street is uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, Francis, Francis Boulevard, Francis, <laughs> Francis Drake Boulevard. Yeah, yeah. What's wrong? You know, mm. yeah, I don't know. Uh, the reason it was named Sir Francis Drake, by the way, is because Marin County is right off the coast of Marin County, is where Sir Francis Drake parked his ship. Okay, and he left a plaque there. So he kind of discovered the Bay Area, all right? Can I ask you a so question? So they named, they named, the school, named the school after him. What? I'm going to ask you a question about where you lived in Marin County. When I went over the bridge, remember, we walked it? You know the movie East of Eden? Was that in Marin County fictionally uh, taken no, place? East of Eden was t took place down in Monterey. Oh, okay. I thought it was Marin County. Okay. Yeah. All right. That was, that was all about oh. Cannery Row and... Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So all right, I got it wrong. Yeah, you got it wrong. Yeah, I, I expect that. Uh, out it of seems it. as though that the Drake uh, High School mm -hmm. yeah. uh, uh, panel voted to change the name. I'm just looking to see what the name change was to the Alex uh, Bennett I'm sure High School. Alex, Alex Bennett. Bennett high. Alex Bennett. Yeah, <laughs> high school. And, and, and the the junior high around the corner, they're going to name the Donald Trump Junior High. Well, no, actually, actually, I, uh, um, I was about. I think I was the most famous person who ever graduated from high school. Nah. Yeah. From that school. I yeah. Luckily, that. I didn't go to go to um, uh, the one down the street, which was. Um, uh, what is it? What was it? Marine Did Catholic. No, there? not Marine Catholic, but the other one, uh, in, uh, in Larkspur, or in. Oh God, I'm trying to remember the name of it now. That's where Robin Williams went, so I wouldn't have been the famous out of there. You know, I think there was one football player, but nobody remembers his name. So, oh, really uh, it says Drake is more of a symbol of redemption uh, than of racism and white supremacy and colonization, according to the people who don't want a name change. But, um, I, but they haven't changed the name yet. Uh, uh, I, they voted to change the name, mm -hmm. um, uh, but I, I am not finding Listen, that, that school is <clears throat> falling apart. I mean, it's been there since I went there. I was in the second class, and I think it started in 1954. Okay, so yeah. how many how many years old is that place? Well, so, I mean, so it's, it's they're, they're going to they're getting to a point where they're going to have to tear it down soon. Uh, you know? I started in 1954, and I'm 67. <laughs> yeah okay so it's 67 years old yeah you know so i mean it's about time they just tear it down if they tear it down put up a new one don't call sir francis drake any longer well, yeah. you're saying don't that do that in california you're, you're crazy the estimated cost to change the name is four hundred and thirty thousand dollars because they need to get new athletic uniforms <laughs> repaint, repaint. oh it ain't that much it's a hell of a lot athletic of fields that. get new letterhead email a new gym floor It'll be more than that. Well, that's their estimated thing. That's what they're talking about doing here, and it's even worse. Yeah. Uh, Almost uh, well, why it's it, now being it, referred to hmm. as te uh, uh, temporarily as High School 1327. <laughs> so it doesn't have a name. It's, it's high like, school. Like, like the Washington I'd football. I'd love to team, hear right? the cheer for that school. <laughs> The Washington 13, 27. He's our man. If he can't do it, nobody, nobody can. can. <laughs> or maybe he, she. What, what is it? 13, <laughs> what? 27? 27. 1327. Rah, rah, rah. Uh, Siskumba. Work. Siskumba. Like the Washington football team. <laughs> exactly. Well, now they're the commanders. Commanders, yeah. Yeah, oh, the yeah. commanders now. Yeah. yeah that's, that's too forceful. Uh, somebody's going to protest that. It's going to hurt their feelings. Sounds like a USFL team. Yeah. Sounds yeah. too military to them or me. You know. mm. Why don't we name it after a famous black person? Why don't we call it Uncle Remus High School? Uh, well, let's um, see. 
I so they, uh, the, the community needs to be able to take a action step. Well, that's, that's another uh, bunch of people discussing stuff. Um, anyway, yeah. So Alex Bennett High School, I think that we ought to, you know, put the vote in for yeah, it. it could be a good Well, there was a big stink going on about the El Camino Real Bell. Yeah. Bell yeah. They put up and down El Camino. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Put one up in Gilroy, and they all everybody's going out there with hacksaws trying to cut it down. Why? They want to melt it and sell it for wait, wait, copper. Wait, 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 wait. What's wrong? That we, you got to remember, folks. There's a place called the El Camino Real, which mm-hmm. is uh, it was actually the kind main of, road. The, yeah, it's, and it was also kind of named after the road that went between the missions. Yeah, right? you know. In, the, in wait, the East let me Coast. finish. Let me finish, Phil. Okay, that went between the missions. And uh, it has a historical presence. What is wrong with the El Camino Real and then uh, along the El Camino Real as a way of saying, here, here's where you are, there's a picture, kind of a cutout of a bell, a metal. So they're actually bells now. They're on, on lampposts oh, really? and they hang a, a oh, metal bell. Okay. So what's wrong with that? The uh, same thing that the people. Boston Post Phil, wrote. let right? him answer my question. Oh. oh, I thought you said what's wrong with that. No, I said to him, "What's wrong with that?" Well, the 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 Indians are upset because of the slavery and all that. You know, they were kicked out of their places, and the and uh, you know the the indigenous people are upset about it. So they can't use it at their casino. Uh, apparently not. No. Well, now, in the East Coast, you got the Boston Post Road, which is a very similar kind of thing to. Do you the know what it's El- called in New York City? Yeah, it's uh, it goes all the way down. Uh, yeah, but what is it in New York City? Uh, the Boston uh, Old Boston Post Road. Yeah, it, in New York City, it's called Broadway. Oh, I, I didn't know and that. Broadway goes all the way up, and if you follow Broadway and you take it all the way up, okay, to as far as it can go, you get into upstate New York and uh, Schenectady or someplace like that. Yeah. yeah. It, it, I think it actually goes to the Canadian border, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that's that's a possibility. So it's, so it's a similar, it's a similar kind of road to the El Camino Real, you know, for you West, East Coast people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but <clears throat> but you know, the bell's racist. Yeah, I just don't understand it. I mean, I I understand racism, okay. And I understand why some people would be mad about it. But the fact is, you're just talking about history here, you know? Um, and in the case of California, the missions were a very important part of the creation of, of the state of California. They, they represented the first kind of continuity for the state. You had these missions. They connected everything. Well, the missions were all a day's travel between each other. Right. Okay. And then you would go from one mission to another, and you could stay at the mission as you were traveling. And that went all the way down the coast. Uh, I can't remember. How many missions were there? 27 missions, something like that? I can't remember the number. They leave the light on for you. Right. Tom Odette. But I just... Like I, Motel 6? Yeah. <laughs> I just don't know what the problem is. You know? I just don't know what the problem is. They're, they're, 21 missions, yeah. 21 and missions? Everybody's, everybody is upset by stuff. You know, uh, I am. I, I just currently got on a panel, and I'm being trained in uh, what, what do they call it? Uh, how to be a good Democrats. How to be a good Democrat? Restorative almost, justice. almost. Uh, we were doing some kumbaya stuff last night oh, on no. Zoom. I'm. Uh, it's called restorative justice, and what what's gonna what's happening is they've. Uh, there was at least fifteen of us that are being trained uh, over the next two months. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to get cases from the DA's office to decide whether these people that had never been in the legal system uh, could have some sort of other path so that they uh, wouldn't end up in court and and have their life influenced by a a stupid mistake. And uh, so I I'm on a, I'm on, I'm one of the panelists and what they'll do is they'll give you like three cases a week Mm -hmm. and uh, there's three panelists on each panel. And uh, the person who has, uh, was arrested gets to explain their story and we get to decide. Isn't this uh, kind of what, isn't this what kind of Kim Kardashian is already doing? 
I'm not sure. There's four cities in California that are doing it now. I not cities, counties. And now uh, the Contra Costa DA uh, has uh, put together this restorative justice thing. And so, you know, I'm I'm it's it's a it's a, it seems to be a very liberal kind of thing, but I'm I'm doing it. And I think it'll 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 be good. Maybe I can make a, a positive influence in in somebody's life that, you know, had uh, had an issue. And, you know, maybe this doesn't have to okay. destroy their All right. life. All right. Let everybody else get a little word in here. Well, it's you know, I was accused of uh, not being a nice guy. Well, well you nobody know, never accused you of not being a nice guy. We accuse you of being stupid. Ah, uh, well, <laughs> this stupid guy is going to decide whether somebody goes to court or doesn't. Well, <laughs> so. that scares me. Yeah, that no, really, no, really no, scares me. Again. How well, about you, Vernon? You know, I'm, there, I'm there to help. Vernon I'm there to do the right thing and as a professional. Okay, okay, calm down. And the okay. Democrats are doing that with Trump. No, they're not. As a professional. Yeah. Oh, wait for his taxes, Trump. <laughs> Never going to see these taxes. Never. How about his lawyers? I mean, yeah, his, he's no, in trouble. Me. I mean, his, uh, his accountants, Sorry, rather. Yeah, they yeah. walked away from him, it seems like. They don't want to do any more. He wasn't paying his bill. I think that's part of it, probably. You know, but no, I think hey, I think with they finally replace this. Can I? Is, can we just? Oh, you got his record can, now. Can, can other, let other people participate in this. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, uh, 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 what were we going to say? Now I forgot. Now. About Trump's law uh, accounts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think what they wanted to do was they're trying to cut their losses on this deal. They don't want to get dragged down into the mire when Trump is, okay? They don't want to be called to account for his his finances by saying they just don't think there's anything in his finances that's reliable enough that they could do the accounting for it. Right. You know. How do you, what do you have to say about that, Phil? Ooh. Well, uh, they turned over 10 years of, uh, of financial documents, um, you know, I don't know. We'll see. We'll yeah. see what comes out of it. I'm sure the uh, New York uh, district attorney is pouring over that stuff. Do you, do you believe Trump's a billionaire? I don't know. And personally, yes, I do. Based based on the property he owns uh, that uh, is pretty much mortgage free. What property he owns that's mortgage free? Uh, most of his golf courses. I, I saw something in, uh, I think it was Forbes magazine. They listed all of his properties and what the outstanding mortgages were on them. And that's all public record. What are his outstanding debts, however? What debts? What do you mean? He lived what off the public dole for four years. <laughs> <laughs> you said it. I didn't. Well, that's true. <laughs> he didn't give me nothing. What about these loans that are going to be coming due here real soon for to the tune of four hundred million dollars? I think four hundred million dollars is a drop in the bucket against the uh, amount of property that that he owns and uh, and and has. How much of the property he owns is actually owned in consort with other people? Not and necessarily. And was done with other people's money. Uh, no, the, the, you know, uh, I. I found a list once, and I don't. Uh, maybe I can find it. I again. remember when you found that list. That was about five years ago. Yeah, and time has passed, Phil, and a lot of lies have been sorted out. Yes. Um, what is? What the hell? Is, what? What the hell is that? Oh, your mic. Got a microphone. Who did? Uh, Brian. My son's microphone. My son's headset. Oh, oh you get in trouble? Why are you having trouble with yours? Are you having trouble like that for a while? Oh, did did he get punished? <laughs> ah. uh, well, wait, we'll, we'll get to that you. in a second. Hold on a second, uh, uh, Alan. Yeah. Okay, so I understand that the latest news is that all Trump's memos are being used for stuffing in the My Pillow pillows. Very good. <laughs> Very good. That's how we got rid of a lot of those uh, papers, huh? Probably. Yeah. No wonder I don't like my my pillow pillow. Yeah. Now what? What were you saying, Brian? Now why did you steal your son's microphone? Yes. Parenting. No, no. But I mean, he must have done something wrong. 
with that microphone to make you take it away from him or something else which encouraged you to take it away from him? Just grades. Grades? Mm -hmm. Oh, they weren't weren't good, huh? (laughs) You know, I I had a deal, Brian, where my daughters were slamming the doors of their rooms. So I told them if they continue to slam the doors, I was I was going to take them off the hinges and put them in the garage. And uh, they continued to slam the door. So I took them off the hem- hinges and put it in the garage. But my ex-wife didn't back me up on it. She felt sure. that uh, uh, I uh, that was too much. So, so your, your daughters were doing that because okay. they learned it from your wife when you came home. Well, yeah, let really me see. So so life. his grades, how bad were they? There's just an understanding of study time. That's all. Oh, I see. Mm. Yeah. Plus, you wanted the mic. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his own mic to use. What the hell? So what did you do? Did you go in there and just uh-huh. unhook it? Now, let me ask you the question. Is this what I want to ask? I, got it. I thought there's all this stuff in Russia, you know, what Phil's talking about. <laughs> but anyway, no, no, but I want to ask you. I can make point of report. He doesn't have any children. That's why. <laughs> well, he doesn't yeah. understand. Well, you know, like, a, a, uh, he only has, a, Brian only has one of them. The other two kids are, are his wife's. Uh, and he has now become the surrogate father, you know. Uh are you allowed to take those kind of actions against them? Oh yeah, we're we're only guaranteed to give them shelter, food, and school. I, I understand, Brian, that because you took his microphone, you better check the catalytic converter on your McLaren. Yeah. Uh, it may be no, but, it may no, be no, gone. But what I want to know I is have a catalytic converter. The motor is a mid-engine. Come on. Yeah, but how? We all have catalytic. How, hold on a second. How much can you? Uh, say, uh, 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 discipline the kids that aren't yours. I mean, you can, Adrian, you can, you know, yell at and do everything to. What are your limitations on your, let's say, stepkids? Yeah. Same. The same. Same. In other words, your mother doesn't, their mother doesn't mind you disciplining them. No, but I've never hit Simon and Stephanie. I've never hit them. Adrian, I've hit. Yeah, yeah. What, what a little tap. Wow. Spank. Sorry, spank, that's just say. A little so, tap, oh, okay. a little tap yeah, on the butt. Oh, with the with, all the cops? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Go, Phil. No, with a with a little kid, you really don't have to hit oh, them no. hard. You just have to do it enough so that they feel that you're mad at them. Oh, but your mother right? would look at me. There, there's a there's a point there's a point when I get to a certain point. Mm-hmm. There's a look that I get to a certain point when Adrian knows that I'm very serious. Ooh. Daddy's yeah, on the wall. Okay. Yeah. Everybody run to the room. My, well, my, my parents never spanked me. But no, my, I never got hit. She would just look at me, my mother. Like, my father, my father could yell at me. Yeah, he, he was get. he was he had been German, and he had this big guttural presence when he yelled at me. And when he yelled at me, I recoiled. You know, oh, and oh, I did. Oh, on top oh. of that, I so loved my father, I didn't want him mad at me. So that's always a, a, a good thing, too, is when the kid respects you so much that they don't want you to be mad at them. You know. Yeah, you hope your kids do stuff to make, they want to make you proud. Sometimes they get to an age and it's, they're lost. Oh, well, you're, you're, you, you haven't seen the worst yet with Adrian. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's coming up. I mean, this comes from somebody that doesn't have any kids himself. The only time I ever tried to slug my father was when I was like 15. Mm. You know, I tried once. He's fifteen yeah, right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> All it takes is oh, once. Oh, look who! Yeah, look once. who just! Look, look who's! Somebody's look, peeking. Somebody's peeking. Mm-hmm. Well, she's not peeking now. Oh. oh, there she is. There she is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, what did she say? Was it right? Did I hear my name? <laughs> she wants grapes. She wants so grapes. Adrian, Adrian, come here. So, so when I'm mad at you, do you know I'm mad at you? When I get mad at you, do you know I'm mad? Huh? Hello. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know I'm mad. Is that, is that you wrapped around that oh. finger, Brian? <laughs> tell, tell him. Tell him. How do you know I'm mad when I get mad? Because your face. Yeah. My, <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. And then what do you do? Run. <laughs> you know I'm serious, right? Yeah. Okay. Good. 
Okay. Yeah. It's the yeah. look. See? It's the look. It's the, my, what my father used to refer to as the 10 pound look. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm talking my about? My mother Jeff? used to hit me with a, uh, a with, hairbrush. Oh, Ooh, no. It's kind of a broomstick. That, what? <laughs> I got a broomstick. That's my severe. Never my dad, me. my dad had the board of education. It was a, a slab of oak this this wide. Oh, those those hurt. Yeah, oak was good. Yeah, I never got spanked. Got I got, I got yelled at. I got yelled at. We're all old enough to remember when we were in school. The principal had one of those things, yeah. and they yep. use it on you. Yep. 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 It was legal. Yeah. <laughs> So the, I had I had a principal that would use it on my behind quite often when I was in grade school. When I got to junior high, he transferred there, and I wasn't I was a big boy, and I wasn't going to have him paddle me. And he told he tried to push me to bend over to paddle me, and I took the paddle out of his hand and hit him in the nuts with it. <laughs> I got suspended for three days, but my parents were okay with it because they don't want they don't hit me. So what do you <laughs> yeah, I right. don't I don't think if I had a kid and he was. Well, they, they don't hit kids anymore in school. They're not allowed to. But if in those days I was raising a kid and that a teacher came along and tried to spank my kid, I'm sorry, don't you lay a finger on my kid. Yep, that's the attitude my parents took. Yeah. <laughs> Mine went down there and told them, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they were nuns. They were, oh, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nuns were oh, the yeah. worst, weren't they? They were worse. The nuns were worse. You know that, that was. And then supper. on top of it, there were there was two lay teachers there, and one of them pinned me up against the wall during sex education class because I was giggling in the back of the class. Mm -hmm. Took me outside and picked me up by the shirt and put me up against the wall, mm -hmm. and said, "What are you laughing at?" And I said, "I was talking to my buddy in the back." <laughs> what was her name? <laughs> Sister Mary Desaad. <laughs> yeah, and they uh, yeah they. Uh, they just pick you up and stick you up against the wall and slam you against well, the wall. Why am I glad I wasn't a back in class? Aren't you glad, <laughs> Alan, you weren't a Catholic? Mm. Huh? <laughs> I think I were Jewish. I, in third grade, I had Mrs. Uh, Golf, and Mrs. Golf would go up to your ear, and she said, and F, your ear would be over here, and she says, I'm going to pull your ear, boy. I'm going to pull your ear. Yeah, yeah. Your ear was halfway across the room. The nuns love the ears. Yeah. Or the ruler across the, the knuckles. He didn't, he didn't have nuns. He's Jewish. Yeah, yeah well, we, we, all, we, all, we, we all we had were, uh, were rabbis, and they, they didn't hit you. They just make you feel guilty. Absolutely. They hit you and made you feel guilty. <laughs> That's you a went Catholic to a yeshiva? Way. No, I didn't go to a yeshiva. I just said rabbis just make you feel guilty. Oh, you know? yeah. As opposed to nuns who will spank the living crap out of you. Catholic school girls wear the coolest uh, skirts with the white socks. I tell you, that is, that's beyond sexy. <laughs> you betcha. Yeah. You're a pervert, Phil. Dad, we didn't realize that when we were their age. Right. Oh, yes, we did. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> must have been a late bloomer. Yeah. The point is, he finds some sexy. Why do you think, why do you think I got pinned up against the wall, Phil? Mm -hmm. uh, you were wearing a skirt? <laughs> I was looking up on it. <laughs> so how's everything down in Florida there, Jeff? Oh, it's still wonderful. It's blowing like crazy really tonight. yeah i'll it's, turn the fan off next to you i know and there's no rain right now so that's good yeah and it's it's uh it's been uh, warm down there oh yeah you know it's been around 70 and then once in a while to 80. tomorrow it's supposed to it's right now it's it's uh, 47 degrees it's supposed to go up to 60 tomorrow here mm -hmm. ask vernon a question yes certainly Certainly, Vernon. So I'll bet your state has is lowered the mask mandate, right? Because it's ran by Republicans. Well, they 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 passed a law that said you cannot impose a statewide mandate, but they said we're going to leave it up to the local districts. Now they're working on a new law that says local districts. You got to do it the way we want you to. 
which is to not not require masks at all. So I was in a Zoom meeting with the CDC. It's a little thing they do. And they said that Kentucky is still very high for, for Omicron. It's the highest state in the country right now. Hmm. But Omicron well, isn't that dangerous either. Unless our you're, hospitalizations, unvaccinated. you're unvaccinated. Our hospitalizations have dropped for the last three weeks. Good, so. good. I'm glad to hear that then. <clears throat> Our positivity rate in the Bay Area is below 5%, which, you know, before Omicron came along, it was around half a percent. So just to give you an idea, 5% means, I don't know, uh, five people in every hundred are testing positive. Well, I'm wondering if they're going to require another booster, because if so, I'm coming up on that magic five or six month period, you know, for another booster. I'm past it. I'm past it now. Yeah. Just passed. Yeah. Phil is too. We're all, you know, I think they're going to, I think they're developing an Omicron booster because they think some of the, um, the uh, future variants are going to be related to Omicron. Well, I'm booster. wondering if I, if I called up to Rite Aid know. and said, can I, can I get a fourth booster? I bet they'd say, come on up and do it. Absolutely. You have a, you have a compromised immune system as you get older. Yeah. But they haven't said that we should go ahead and do it. So I don't know if the insurance companies will handle it or the government what insurance it. companies it, it's it, the the country pays for it the u.s government right pays for right it. but they may not they may only pay for three not for four that's what i'm saying oh okay you know i, I know people that are getting the fourth vaccine yeah um, you want to hear something weird about about medicine my wife takes a medication that uh is the controlled substance for for a condition that she has, mm-hmm. and we switched pharmacies because the one we had been using was closing on Sundays due to staffing issues. Well, the new pharmacist at the CVS that we're going to now was was reading her the riot act because we did not want them to submit this medication to her insurance. Uh-huh. Rather, we wanted them to charge it to the discount we have with Good RX. Which saves us a ton of money. Yeah, and he yeah. was and he was getting pissed off because he thought we were doing something nebulous because we did not want him filing it with the insurance. Well, I I tell um, Costco don't file with the insurance because if they file with the insurance, then I'm going to get at least four hundred and fifty dollars a year added to the drugs that I'm buying. So they, it, it, but if I just buy it without the uh, the uh, um, uh, insurance, uh, then they'll give it to me pretty much cheaper than I would have gotten it with insurance. Well, you know, a few, a few things are a little bit more, but if you take in the four hundred and fifty dollar, you know, copay that I have to do every year uh, on the insurance, it's it's uh, I I come out ahead. Well, know. the point I was trying to make is that this pharmacist was embarrassing my wife. Mm-hmm. making her feel bad because she did not want him to submit this to her insurance company, rather just to take the good RX discount. Yeah. So why? Because they probably get a lot of money when they submit it to the insurance company because they could charge a different rate to the insurance, even though uh, the copay might be smaller. Well, a lot of the good RX stuff, though, I was looking at good RX the other day, and if you if you look at the coupon, that you get, it says it's only good on your first purchase of this drug. Oh. So if you went in to get it a second time, like you wanted it month after month after month, it wouldn't be cheaper. But I'm saying that if you have a Costco card, go to the Costco pharmacy online and check the price you're paying for your drugs under insurance as opposed to what you'd pay for it without insurance at Costco, and in most cases, not all, but most cases, you'll you'll save money, you know, and and certain drugs they cover. Where I, if I were doing it under my, let's say I take uh, pregab, uh, not pregabalin, but uh, gabapentin. Gabapentin, uh, no, not gabapentin. Uh, I take uh, for for my prostate, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I not t- taking it for your memory, but. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, wow. I'm not taking I'm not taking Cialis. I'm taking the generic, which is Tadalafil. Called, oh, and Tadalafil, if I order it through my insurance, they don't cover it. So it's going to cost me about three hundred and forty-five dollars for a three-month mm-hmm. supply. 
where if I get it at Costco, a three-month supply, without insurance, guess yeah. how much it costs? 20 bucks. Uh, yeah. Try 15. Yeah. Oh, my God, that's cheap. I, I, I yeah. was just tested for wow. this stuff called SIBO, which is small intestine bacterial overgrowth. Mm-hmm. Now, there's a drug So that's that, what's wrong with your brain, huh? Well, yeah, actually, <laughs> it creates brain fog yeah. uh, and uh, you know, memory issues and bloating and gas. What and, kind of uh, issues? Hmm? What kind of issues? Yeah, okay. And, Bloviating. And and then uh, so issues. Yeah. the drug, the drug is two thousand dollars. <throat> that it's an antibiotic that you take yeah. uh, for a couple yeah. of weeks. But uh, my nutritionist said that if Kaiser's not going to cover it, she says we can get it through Marine Mark's Marine uh, Pharmacy in Canada for one hundred and fifty bucks. Well, that's pretty cheap. Well, you and you know there was a, a number was, of clients that do that. There so was I, a there was a drug Mark's, when I had. Um, uh, what do you call it? Irritable bowel syndrome. Yeah. Uh, my doctor suggested a drug called Zyfaxin. And uh-huh. my insurance wouldn't cover it. Um, uh, because I needed to get this drug because it did work. It was cheap. It used to cost me about 300 a month. But it was it did the trick. I mean, it, I didn't have to. I only had to take it when I started getting an attack mm-hmm. of irritable bowel i didn't take it when i wasn't getting an attack so finally i got an attack again and i had my doctor prescribe it and i take it into the prescription up at the right right aid and i give my insurance to say oh, your insurance doesn't cover this i go okay i uh, didn't before either um uh, how much is it going to cost me and i figure they're going to come back and they're going to say three hundred dollars and they write it down it's two th- over two thousand dollars for a month supply. For a month. Okay, and I went. What are these people? Crooks? It was Rifaxin. Zyfaxin. Oh, X I Faxin. Okay, because uh, the, the one that R I F A X. Yeah, well, Zyfaxin. So what happened was I started taking, just for the hell of it, probiotics. My IBS went away. Oh, really? Yeah. And how much do probiotics cost? Oh, I don't know, about $3 a month, something like that. Holy yeah. uh, good ones are more than that, I think. Yeah. Uh, I take I take uh, a Lion and Culturel to make a world of difference. I, I have, well, what, how I discovered that the, the probiotics were doing it for me was uh, I started taking these probiotic gummies, and I suddenly oh. noticed all my problems were going away. They you work. Know, they do work. Um, it worked for me. I've had irritable bowel syndrome since I was twenty. Yeah. Before so had don't don't. It. So you know Zyfaxin then. Yeah, yeah. It's an antibiotic. And it's it's, it's very expensive. Yeah, very expensive. expensive. What it was, it was three hundred dollars a month, and all of a sudden it went up to two thousand. Well, two for sixty, you got uh, uh, um, uh, it cost you about. Uh, uh, three hundred a month, and then the next time I went in, it was two thousand. You know, somebody jacked the price up. You remember this one guy they, uh, with AIDS drugs that he suddenly jacked the price yeah, up yeah, on, yeah. and Asian they arrested Asian. him and threw him that in jail. Get arrested? Yeah. yeah. Well, why don't they do the same thing to these people who make Zyfaxin for Christ's sake? You know, I mean, suddenly, and then you look. I'll tell you, look now, drug companies every year are raising their prices. First of the year, all the drug uh, companies raise the prices on their drugs. So, I mean, it's getting out of hand. And insurance companies are ready for this. If you get uh, Part G um, uh, medical Medicare. insurance, right, for Medicare, which we have, uh, every year it goes up 8%. Mm-hmm. Well, this stuff is still expensive, Alex. Good RX, which is what uh, that the Vernon was talking about. Yeah, they want twenty one hundred dollars for that for that for that drug. Wow. Good RX. Yeah, Good RX wants twenty one hundred. You know, if you go to pharmacies around here, Walmart and and Costco, Costco is a little over two thousand dollars. Did you just That's check the co- antibiotic? You, wow. ch- you check Costco, right? Yeah, I'm. Well, when you have the Good RX app. It, it looks at all the pharmacies in the area and compares prices. 
Hey, Alan, I sent you the list of the drugs that they're going to make me take. Can you tell me what the good RX price is on the... Welcome, first- ladies and gentlemen, to drug let's, dealing. Let's, let's do this, let's do this Brief, off, uh, off the be- show. Nobody I'm else. My mother's well, no, I think this is give supposed him, to be thousand dollars. Give him one so that he knows what what is it? How much is it going to supposed to be for you? Uh, it, they told me it was two thousand. How about how about, yeah. how about with insurance? Uh, I well, the insurance would pay it if they agree to it. But Kaiser is a little difficult with this stuff. Okay, so what's the drug? R I F A X I M I N. I, I sent it to you. Or Faximin or something. Like yeah, that. what is it for? It's not a ge- very good Jerry Lewis drug, though. Uh, <laughs> but pregabalin <laughs> is. I like pregabalin. Pregabalin. Yeah. Uh, okay, hold on a minute, Phil. I'm looking it up. I still like up. that he made the insult, Alex, about you, Jerry Lewis. Oh yeah, well he he didn't make an insult <laughs> about me. He, no, de- he dedicated. You'll never walk alone to me on his. Uh, about three thousand. We have a lot of love when he used how to say she's the client. How, how much? How much, Phil? How much? Uh, three grand. Uh, R I F A X I M I N. Yes. Yep. It's the same. It's the what, same drug that is, Alex, Alex is talking about. What is so it? It is. I mean, uh, what, yeah. what, what, so good what, RX, you can get it, save a thousand, or you can just buy the. Well, the where, where do they get off charging this kind of money for yeah. a drug that doesn't at least blow you? Well, right. that's you know, my nutritionist said I can get it from Mark's Marine Pharmacy in Canada for 150 bucks. You know why it's cheaper in Canada? No. Socialized medicine. You can't sue the drug companies. No, it, 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 it's. I think that the Americans are paying for all the research, and then they sell it. That's no, what Trump no, said he no, wanted. No, was no, that no. the price of the drugs <laughs> shouldn't be any higher in the U.S. than well, sell it to other countries. Well, the United, the right in the United Congress. States, they're more expensive than anywhere else, Phil. Right. You right. Know? That's right. And, and uh, I think I, here's part of the reason there's a problem in this country. I think you'll agree with me, Vernon. You've heard this one mm-hmm. probably. That the trouble is that um, Medicare uh, is not allowed to um, bargain, for well, bargain for the prices. So, therefore, they charge anything they can. If they were bargaining for the prices, believe negotiate, me, negotiate, negotiate the prices. You can bet it would all come down. But here, mm-hmm. it's more expensive here than in Canada because Canada says, "Hey, you can't charge that much for a drug." But you know? they don't charge the same anywhere else in the world. These drug companies. That's what Trump was talking about: was making the drug companies oh, sell it well, in the what, U.S. What day did he wake up and figure that one out? Well, that was one of the things he wanted to do. What? Uh, how, how many years did he, he do, do that? He had four years. He had he four tried. years, and he didn't do it. He never tried. Uh, the, the, he never those tried. Americans wouldn't do it. Isn't that he, socialized he medicine, though? He, he claimed he was going to try that, and he didn't try it. And you're right. It is socialized medicine. Absolutely. Yeah, so he didn't want any of that either. So he's talking out of both sides of his ass. And can I ask a question, Philip? You're going to shred evidence as paper. Why would you stuff it down the toilet? Wouldn't you shred it or burn it somewhere? <laughs> or, I mean, or, or in Trump's stupid. case, he could have shoved it up his ass. <laughs> you know, with a dead look at that. <laughs> sometimes I take a poop and it won't flush. He should have sent it to the pillow guy. Does, he could have used it, it in the stupid. pillows. Yeah. Remember when he was complaining about how many times he had to flush? Yeah. <laughs> Damn, you know what? I you know why. Melania was trying to flush <laughs> out no. down the toilet. But he I probably mean, had the sons do it. Throw the paper down the toilet. There we go. Well, it's terrible. <laughs> It, you know, that is not going down. Keep doing it. Had a flush him down there. Well, the Republicans are the Republicans are starting to kind of lose their love affair with him. They kind of figure it's it's time to move on. You yeah. know, if but, Trump cured cancer, the Democrats wouldn't like. No, him. no, we're not talking about the well, Democrats. Actually, they, we're they, talking about so, the, we're talking about the Republicans. Phil. I know there's a lot of money to be made in cancer, so maybe he wouldn't cure it. They. The Republicans have, are kind of losing their love affair. Some Trump. are. No, a lot of them. A, a lot, lot of them. He still has a lot of control over who runs, who doesn't, who wins, Mitch who doesn't. Mitch McConnell when you've, is losing it yeah. big time. Yeah, when you Mitch lose McConnell Mitch McConnell, you've lost everything. Yeah, he hates McConnell. Who's he, who he losing to? He, is he, he losing to a Democrat or is he losing to another Republican? No, no, no. He's losing oh. faith in him. His The defense oh. of Trump 
by Republicans. McConnell's not afraid of Trump because he doesn't run again until 2026. Well, yeah, McConnell I mean, uh, and Trump, uh, you know, I don't trust McConnell anyway. I mean, <laughs> he's in bed with the Chinese. Well, the rest of us don't trust Trump. Yeah. So Why? Because he, wait, literally, he, he's, he, he's literally he's in bed with the Chinese. Yes. 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 Uh, <laughs> but why is he in bed with the Chinese? Because his wife is his Chinese. Wife is is the daughter of a very significant banker in, in China. Yeah. And. Uh, you, you know that they don't get to rule no, wait, unless wait, wait, they're... Wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. A yeah. banker in China is somebody who doesn't particularly care for the Communist Party. Uh, Mainly because... I don't think they I don't think they get to operate unless they care for the Communist Party. No, they get to operate. They get yeah, to operate. then they chop their head off if they don't operate the way the <laughs> Communist Party wants. Well, so I'll tell you what's happening. My wife is going part-time, by the way, at her okay. job. Yeah. Yeah, because... Uh, the, they are the, white. They're, no, they're taking the uh, about half of her job away, so they're going to give oh. her the job. You know. So does she only get to choose from column A and not column B? <laughs> That's right. Like That's exactly it. Yeah. I had to, yeah. But but uh, what is we still get insurance. Then she's going to be hired. She's going to be kept on for about two years. And by then she's tired. You know, mm. it's yeah, time. Really. It's time for us to, you know, us? two years. They figure you'll be gone. Will you stop it? He's pushing me in the <laughs> If I am, you're going to feel terrible. You're Come right. back. I will. Us. I will feel terrible. Well, we will make him feel terrible too every day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I'll feel terrible. Yeah. Right. Um, but uh, let me see here. What else? What else is happening in the news? Anything uh, uh, important? Uh, pretty much <laughs> nothing. So, does anybody have any comments on what's going on between Ukraine and Russia, and why? Uh, I, I don't think the U.S. should get involved in in that. And I think Ukraine is a very corrupt uh, uh, country. And uh, why is it a corrupt country? Well, uh, it's a corrupt country. Just look at Hunter Biden and oh, Bar oh, 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 mm -hmm. oh, 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 because of all the alleged Hunter Bidens. Of all of a sudden, Ukraine, so Ukraine is a corrupt country. Yeah, and uh, ten percent. So, so the you're guy. rooting for Russia, are you? Uh, well, I heard somebody. Uh, are you rooting for Russia? I asked you a very simple question. They're gonna yeah, shave. Kinda. They're gonna shave. Uh, I, 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 kinda. He's gonna be a fill-in for Putin. Well, you know, if I was Putin, I wouldn't mm -hmm. want uh, uh, the uh, Ukraine to go NATO right on his borders. Just like I don't want Russia and China in Cuba. Or, uh, you know, because... You why know, why should you even care? NATO isn't going to attack Russia. Right? Well, it seems as though they put bases and, and other things that... Uh, NATO uh, is not in the business of attacking defense. people. They're in the business of protecting people. Right, but in order, a good offense is a good defense. Phil, you don't want Russia in there, Okay. No, I, I don't want anybody to fight. Plus, yeah, I think yeah, the leader, yeah. the leader of uh, Zelensky is his name, I think. Yeah, he's yeah. comedian. Yeah, former stand-up mm -hmm. comic. I'm all right. for him. You yeah. know. Yeah. Didn't yeah. didn't Russia own part or or all of the Ukraine area and lost it yeah. before? No, they they no. lost it during the Soviet Union's breakup. Oh, something like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, but, the, so Putin wants it back. Yeah, but if Ukraine falls, uh, you know, just to take the other side of the coin, what's next to that? Poland, which is a NATO country and then would possibly get us into uh, a... Um, uh, NATO has already told Russia that if Russia invades uh, Ukraine, they're going to take action. So there you go. Oh, we don't yeah, need to they, wait for, they're going to stop buying their gas. Poland. We don't need to wait for... I don't think this guy's like Hitler trying to take over the world. Well, uh, why is he trying to take over these countries? You know, I, you know, if he's not trying to take over Europe and and spread uh, you know, the Russian I Soviet you and Russian were on a first name basis. Why don't you ask him? Yeah. Well, you know, there's something called Russian Soviet aggression, right. and uh, he seems to be pretty good at it. Yeah. Yeah, but you you know, you do know that Putin's the richest man in the world. Yeah. Yeah. He's stolen a lot, that's for sure. No, well, here's what he did. He told the oligarchs, you give me a certain percentage off the top, and uh, I won't go after you. 
How much does he get to get that? It's like muscle money. Not a penny. <laughs> it's like paying for protection, really. He fears this network. Will, he fears yeah, it I because mean, of our fierce is. opinions. <laughs> it's crazy. It's like he's a gangster. Do I won't tell you if you, you, you pay, if you pay for protection. Oh, okay. wait a minute. What? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. New, the question of the night. What is Brian eating? Any guesses? Grapes. 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 Are they? All right. That was now the, I have are they Wait, wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Grapes. Where'd you get the grapes from? Oh, uh, some <laughs> Russian <laughs> supermarket. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. It, There's a Russian food. supermarket right next to Adrian's dance class, so I always go there and get oh. vegetables and fruit. Uh, you didn't take them from Simon's room? No. <laughs> do, do you want to know? Do you want to know? I got to tell you, uh, uh, the 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 worst thing about Costco is, is you can't depend on their fruits. One week you buy them and they're delicious. The next week you buy them and they're terrible. Am I right? Yep. 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 You're right. Yeah. You I, they're okay. okay. Yeah, I went in there one time and the oranges were in the in the box ones, you know, oh, in the boxes, yeah. and uh, they were all moldy, all oh. moldy. Yeah, well, I, told I, the guys, I, I got strawberries, which aren't that bad, but then I bought the blueberries last week, oh, bl- blackberries, uh-huh. a couple of weeks ago, and they were delicious. They were just yeah, succulent yeah. and delicious, and then uh-huh. I, so I bought some more this week, and I had to throw them out. They were tasting oh, bitter. Good. Do you know that I, I read an article about Walmart and their f- produce, and it seems as though they do something to it to make it all uniform throughout all of their stores. Uh, uh, oh, way, way they uh, have uh, it uh, uh, um, 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 Kevin seems to disagree with you. Why? But son been... works at a packing plant. They send them all the shit fruit. Is yeah. that it? I thought yeah. they got all the stuff that was That's like how it becomes size. uniform. It's all shit. Uh, well, I, I've never had shit fruit. I've had, you know. Long. Well, uh, the uh, the grapes the were good. The lower grade, I'll the, say. Yeah. Now, the grapes were good this week. You yeah. Know? But I never buy avocados from them anymore because oh, they yeah. go from ripe to bad. <laughs> they, there's no in between. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Grapes I, are I, organic. Wait, 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 hold on a second, Phil. No, I, I agree 100% because I get those and they're nice and hard and I say, perfect. Leave these for a few days or a week, and then yeah, all of a sudden, bam! <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, do, yeah. Do they sell organic at Costco. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you know how you tell? There's a label on the avocado, and it's like a five-digit code, and it starts with the number nine. And if it if if that's the case, then all I'm that, saying is there avocado. Also got a big sign there. Yeah. That says organic. <laughs> It's just yeah. organic grapes. Usually, yeah. you can tell by I've that seen too. that. Uh, the, the nine but, but is the, the, IQ, right? They, their avocados suck. They just don't do not get Costco avocados. I yeah. buy them down at my suck grocery store here, and I get good avocados. It's not that hard to find good avocados. You know, there was a guy at my work who is one of my supervisors, and uh, he had an avocado tree, and they had the avocados that had the small seed and just huge. And he got retired, and I said, "Yeah, I was gonna miss him, but really, I was gonna miss his avocados well, even well, more." Well, the avocados that came off the tree—do they have a number five on them? I didn't look close <laughs> enough. Hey, uh, you know the? Uh, you hear the theme? In, in, no, but in uh, New York, <laughs> gro- growing up in New York, yeah, uh, I, I yeah. never saw an avocado. Okay, thanks. Good night. Yeah, we get all our shit fr- fresh off the farms. Well, that's here. because California was where you found avocados, but right. now you find I them all the over the country. And, and most of the fruit comes from South America. It doesn't even come from, you know, local produce. Know. Anyway, hey, listen, that's our theme song. We got to go here. Thank you, Phil, for joining us tonight and starting off the show. Uh, uh, my, our good friend Alan is here with us. Thank you. Kevin, thank you. Tony, always a pleasure to have you here. Uh, uh, living with the ghost of your mother. Uh, He's around. And uh, uh, let me see here. Vernon Nunn, always nice to see you. You know that, Vernon. And mm-hmm. and Jeff, just knowing you're there is nice I'm enough happy. for me. And Brian, <laughs> love having you here too. You're really smart and fun. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our citizen panel. Everybody give a big wave goodbye. And I'll give a big wave goodbye with you. And then uh, I will fade to me. And then I will get rid of them. 
And uh, hey, that's pretty good. And I'm always in sync now, I think, for the most part. I think. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, that's it for now. Uh, Jack Bishop is next. He's here with The Intersection. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, to get vaccinated, if you're not vaccinated, wear a mask. And if you don't wear a mask, get the fuck away from me. Bye, everybody. See you later. Good night.